Welcome back, everybody. It's time for game two of this best of three LGD International versus Team Rattles or Rising Stars. God damn it. I haven't <laughs> even been making this. I, I didn't even finish that, though, so that doesn't count. But it's going to be game two now. Rising Stars, they are currently tied with LGD and one and two in the group. Winner of this. <laughs> winner of this best of You're three. You're failing. You're failing. Like for the past Wh two, hey, three days. Shut up. I have not made a single mistake. At He's got this evil smile on his face, guys. But okay, we'll try this again. LGDN versus Rising Stars, a best of three. Rising Stars leading uh, the set 1-0. If they take this game two, they will be moving on to the playoffs as the three seed coming out of group B. LGDN, they need to win two in a row. They've got to take this game two. Yep, and the draft already well on the way. LG International are actually banning out Chan Enchantress, like you pointed out. Last game, Misery definitely play those uh, jungle heroes quite well and it's their play style for their supports right they do roam a lot to set up ganks or at least that was their style when they are kind of uh, on the rise uh, in china a couple months ago but now it seems like they're going to be sticking to a little bit more laning strategies darkster maybe it's going to be on the long lane maybe it's going to be one of those jungle darkster that plays very greedily like we saw last game well for lgdn they'll go for a sand king here so they get the sand king visage very, very heavy damage from these supports coming out in the mid game. The team fight's going to be fantastic, but no carry, no hard late gamer as of yet. So Rising Stars, they'll be banning those solo mids with the Slark and then, of course, the Spectre here. Well, I'm curious to see what is LG going to go for this game. What kind of a strategy will it be? Visage, Sand King. With Sand King there as the initiator, it's just not that dominant of a tri lane because you can't really jump anyone too easily, but... The, if they do get the stun, if they have some good uh, sort of initiating carry in the tri lane, could be very scary. Yeah, if you look at the Rising Star tri lane themselves, they have Shadow Demon and Alchemist. That's not exactly too strong of a combo. I mean, you have Disrupt and then you stun in, but by the time that you're doing that, you're getting stunned. You're getting slowed. You're getting you're eating soul assumptions. It, so. It's very good against a, an offlane solo, but not not so good against the right. dueler tri lane. And I imagine LG International is going to take the tri lane fight to your face because they have the better tri lane. Um, or, I mean, if you want to just safe lane farm a visage, that's fine too. Weaver is going to be the pickup here. And that's going to take advantage of the fact that there is really no true lockdown so far. I mean, you have stun from Alchemist, you have Clockwork, but you just, those are not reliable ways to keep Weaver kind of pinned down. As for Rising Stars, what will they go for this game? What kind of hero do they want on their side? They've got the Alchemist, the Clockwork. Either of these heroes can go solo mid. Off lane is possible for the Clock. You can aggressive tri lane with Alchemist, but like you said, not the strongest tri lane. And I like what LGDN have done here Ten because they picked Darkseer really and Weaver, and there's no solo that's going to easily deal with either of those Five heroes 1v1. Really Maybe something like a Lone Druid if Rising Stars want to go for that, but most likely they'll have a strong tri lane with the Weaver or the Darkseer, uh, either way they want to go, and uh, or even some other hero yet to be picked. And then the other hero will have a 1v1 matchup against something like a Clockwork. LGDN, in theory, could win the tri lane and that safe lane. Yeah, I mean, they have very good laning heroes uh, to, to make up for the fact that they're making right now. It looks a tiny bit weak. It depends on how the laning stage goes. For Rising Star, I'm expecting something like Kunkka coming out here. Uh, they already have the SD. That's going to be some good mid-game kind of setup combo. They have a ton of initiation power. And you, like, for example, you hook in with Clockwork, and then you follow with Alchemist putting down Acid Spray. You follow up with the Torrent Bolt combo. It, it's just... It's a line that we've seen, for example, LG China use a ton, and it, they use it to great effect. Yeah, maybe we'll even see two AoE heroes. Kunkka, Lina might be the choice, sure, and they'll yeah. go Lina now, and it leaves their options wide open for that final hero. Could even be something, I feel like a gyrocopter in this tri -lay would be pretty strong. Weaver sure. has to be in close to do damage, Sankin as well. That's where the flat cannon can really hurt you, and gives you that punch after the setup, the Shadow Demon Disrupt into the Lina stun. So Ten if they want to go something like Gyro, I think Rising Stars can actually get away with a third farmer here. We'll see what LGD and ban, though. They do have one ban left. Yeah, for those of you guys that are just joining us, LGD and is down one game in this best of three series, and this series matters a lot, right? It's, yeah. It's the, for the this third is, place. It's an elimination match, not def by default, but because of the way Group B is developed. Both of these teams are one and two. Orange and DK already guaranteed to be first and second place in the group. That best of three, they're both 3-0, will be happening tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. But yeah, for this match, Lumi, like you said, it's an elimination match. Loser will be fourth in the group. They will be going home. Winner, third place, going to the playoffs. just want to point out that... Uh the BTS laundry machine is scaring the shit out of me every time. Every time, like it, the engine turns, the the lights dim, and I just don't know if our computer is it's gonna shut down. Yeah, we also when the air conditioning goes on in the studio, sometimes that uh, causes some power power surges, or at least the lights flicker. Kawa has a small aneurysm, a small heart attack, and well, then the show goes on. The show must go on after all. DK will be the final ban here for Rising Stars, and I guess they do need 
LGDN does need a solo mid. We could see the Weaver go mid. We could see the Darkseer, but I think these heroes are better suited to the side lane. So most likely LGDN, they'll go for that G hero right now. Yeah, DK is actually a fairly smart ban because if you look at the Rising Stars, all four of their heroes are kind of basically single target focused. Yeah. So if you pick up some sort of tanky frontline tank that you have to deal with, like a Dragon Knight, then you just actually blow a ton of your new damage Ten on a hero that may or may not easily buy back and then just come in and just win a team fight. So uh, LG it may be smart up on this and just just pick another kind of tanky hero. Magnus is a front uh, great frontline tank. Yeah, and the other thing is this looks to be a game for LG Dian where Darkseer might have a very fast mech, a very fast pipe. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like Rising Stars are going to be able to dominate him in the lane unless... I, I mean, he can even go jungle if they do run a defensive tri lane, if they try to match up against the Darkseer. So... Darkseer's gonna have a good start. If you get the DK as well, your five man is ridiculous. But, well, TA will be the choice here for LGDN. They'll go back for, if you go back, if you flash back a few months to the G League season two, G was getting massive respect from the Chinese teams. Every game his Templar Assassin was getting banned. Oftentimes, even in the first stage, in the first two bans, targeted bans to try and shut him down. We haven't really seen this hero getting much respect as of late, and it'll slip through as this final pick. I think part of it is teams learning how to Ten deal with the three. Templar Assassin. You just don't let her snowball out of control as much. As, fa as far as the banning went, though, it was mostly against LGDN. It wasn't in general they would ban TA, it was versus LGDN they would Right, ban and, and since then, as in general, I think they, they figure out how to do Gotcha. Deal. Yeah. Like, Templar Assassin, it's an it's a okay hero to... It, you lose a lane against Templar Assassin with most heroes. But for the most part, if you don't let her to get a 10 minute triple kill all of the map, then yeah. you're okay, you're okay. You know, the one interesting thing is they'll pick into TA against an Alchemist. Alchemist Acid Spray, that's gonna immediately remove your refraction And charges. Shadow Poisons. And, and Shadow Poison yeah. as well, which can remove two charges per Shadow Poison if you wanna pop them every time that you spam them out. So it's a lot of ways to remove refraction in this game, but they are on the dire side. They have a Weaver, so they have a lot of Minus Armor, and of course the Meld will work on Roshan, and yep. the Minus Armor in general is great with Visage. We've seen Visage, one of those supports that rushes a Medallion often before anything else, so... I think that's what I, I we think saw... because they're on Dire side, this is a pretty strong pick. Yeah, I think this is what we saw out of Orange yesterday. Remember it was like a Medallion, and then there had another Minus Armor, and the Mel Strike took somebody's hero down from half it HP. It was doing like, like 500 damage. Yeah, it was top, like, like instant, 600 damage. instant kill. So we might see something like that this game. The final and last pick here from Rising Star, it's going to be Juggernaut. And it's a one row Juggernaut. This is rarely seen, but I'm not sure how, how well it works. The last time I saw it, it worked quite well. We'll, we'll see if it's going to work out here. Xiao Tuji, it's going to be playing that Juggernaut. Era the solo mid player for this game. It's going to be playing Alchemist mid. Mofi's going to be handling Alina. We have Super playing Shadow Demon once again. And last but not least, we have XTD going top lane as the clockwork. Those are the boys of Rising Stars, of course. They are leading this best of three, 1-0, guys. It's an elimination match. And now LGD, they're actually on match point. They can't afford to lose another game. They've got to win two in a row or they will be going home. They'll fall short in yet another event. For these boys, they started strong when they came to China in the G League Season 2. But they got to find a way, and where there's a will, often there is that way. Pycat will be handling the Weaver. 1437 on the Visage. We may have a small clash here. Misery could be handling the Sand King. We'll have G on the Templar Assassin. And last but not least, it will be Brax handling the Darkseer. Back to that three roll like we saw last game. Oh They're going to find Mophie. What an aggressive move by Rising Stars walking right into five. And that is exactly what the Doctor ordered. They'll find an easy first blood there. Rising Stars, very cocky play. Bottom before zero minute. G's gonna have an easy time on the lane. Lane. lane is hard. Yeah, lane is now actually very, very hard. I do want to point out the net worth graph is completely bugged out right now. The net worth chart, because... No, 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 chart. Look, look at the chart real fast. Because I don't even know how Visage has 78 net worth right now. How's <laughs> that even possible? He's got items on him, but okay. <laughs> Valve... Yeah. Vovo, please fix. <laughs> Jesus, Louis. As though, you, as though you need more memes in your arsenal. You've now got another one to work with. <laughs> Any case, even, 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 even Kawa is just laughing at Lumi in the studio. And hey. the, the BTS laundry machine going off again here. But we'll get underway. And like you said, Lane, well, this is exactly what G wanted. He'll start with the bottle now at level one. And I still think Air should do all right simply because of how good Acid Spray is again at removing refraction charges. But it'll be much easier for G than it otherwise would have been. Yeah, I mean, he's got that early bottle so that he doesn't really care too much at all. And uh, my attention is mostly on this bot lane. Who do you think wins this bot lane here? Uh, on one side, you have two 600 range heroes, or Lena 635 range, and you have a carry here that can spin away from most aggressions. But on the other, it's, it's a free farm on, on the Weaver, I feel like. I mean, it's kind of interesting for both teams because 
who do you actually go on? Weaver, you can't really go on him as a rising star simply because he'll just Sakuchi away after the disruption, the stun, unless he mistimes it or wastes it. If you go on the Juggernaut, he's just going to Blade Fury out, and it's hard to even get in range for that initial Burrow Strike. So feels to me like both teams probably won't find kills unless they just flat out screw up, and they'll actually smoke Misery. Yeah, one man mid. smoke at, at level one, this is rather unusual to say the least. If you see the roam, it's usually with two, but this might be what they're hoping for is just to kind of catch air unaware. That courier is right there. Do you go for that courier? No, he's going to go for the first blood instead. Is there any mail strike? Mail strike not even necessary. Yeah, remember, uh, it's scary. actually, it's not first blood here, but uh, it is going to be that second kill going the way of LGD. That's completely fine, not first blood, because you got the original first blood, and now he's still doing quite okay. If there ever was a recipe to snowball, this is it. First blood is going to find another kill, and... I mean, maybe should have gone for the courier there, but it was a level one burrow strike, and that's the risky play. You burrow strike in to try to hit the courier. If it just gets out of range, you end up dying to the tower, not getting the kill. You've just allowed Alchemist to right yeah. back into that middle lane. And sometimes so it's a safe play for Misery. Sometimes you might even take two hits to kill with courier, like a level one or two. I'm not too sure. It depends on certain heroes. But in any case, it looks like TA finds himself an invisibility rune. Gonna go back in mid lane, continue shutting him hard. I mean, this is one of the ways for, for LG in to win game, right? Where you have G just snowball completely out of control. Mid lane, Mel strike, right click, right click, air down to about half HP. He does have his bottle now, but it's just a world of difference. G's gonna have face boots in like two, three minutes. Again, it's still going to be hard for G just to solo kill air because if he dives air, he has no refraction for the tower. So he's always got to dive it with creep support. It's still possible to kill him, but the timing will have to be right for it. And Super is actually very confident in this bottom lane, just marching forward. Would love for Rising Stars to initiate, I guess, or for LGDN to initiate, and then you've got the Blade Fury to kind of turn things around. But the one lane we haven't looked at, Lumi, it's going to be that off lane clockwork for Rising Stars. XDD is 10 and 1 in this lane against a safe lane darks here, only 12 and 0 for Brax. XDD doing a lot better than I would have expected. Well, at least for now. Oh, nice uh, juke out here from Brax. Brax now doing a very smart thing, pulling the creep wave. To, look at this huge stack. He could just drop an iron shot, but the two fur bogs are just stomping the hell out of Brax. He's running left. He's running right. That iron shot on creeps doing a little bit of work as well. He's trying to man fight this one. I think he might win because iron shot damage is absolutely OP. Brax just breaking the ankles of that clockwork and toppling. Great place. Yeah, that looked really bad for him. The battery assault wearing off at just the right moment. If he'd gotten, say, a second or more of it to work with, would have gone the other way. But instead, Brax pulls out a desperately needed kill because it looked like he was having a bit of trouble in this lane. And Well, not desperately needed, but to some extent needed at any rate. And now, Rising Stars losing all three lanes here, basically. Even the tri lane, you're looking at Pycat. Well, not losing this lane, but he's still getting decent farm as an off lane weaver. At times, it's even just a dual lane. You can't even really call this bottom lane a tri lane because Sand King's been all around the world. So I would say they're basically winning all three lanes, winning two and at least breaking even in one. Yeah, Juggernaut does have 18 CS, but I'm not sure whether that 18 CS is going to be enough. He's going to be going for a quick phase boost. They need to disrupt the Sand King. They need to follow up with the LSA in a spin and go for a kill of their own. But Sand King, uh, as well as Visage, is going to stay very far back. They're not going to get initiative upon, and there's just no way you're going to kill that Weaver. <laughs> this is so annoying for 1437. He knows if he walks up the river here, he'll get disrupted, Light Striker <laughs> Raid, and then there's going to be the Blade Fury. Uh -oh. But he really wants to come. He doesn't want to have to walk around the long way. Finally, Misery's going to drive him back. He's got boots. He's got his level 2 Burrow Strike here. Again, you don't want to go on Juggernaut. You have to go on Shadow Demon, or he just disrupts whoever you're initiating on. So... I don't feel LGD are going to get many kills in the lane, and that's why we'll see Misery head towards mid again. Yep, I mean, that, that one-man smoke gang worked, and he's not smoked up this time, but he does have level 3 as well as a boot to speed, so oh, that should the, be enough. And there's already level 6 on TA. This is, traps, and two traps yeah. in the lane. Perfect for G. He'll go in now. The Asset Spray is going to remove all the refraction off the bat. It removes them again. It doesn't matter, though. Air will go down. Great movement for Misery in this early game, and LGD and off to a very hot start. While that was happening, though, they did lose their Weaver bottom. Pycat actually gets picked off, maybe got caught when he tried to Sakuchi away, and well, then he probably didn't have his escape mechanism, but LGDM, still a big lead for them. 4-1 to one the score, we'll take a look at the gold graph here, and about a 1,500 gold lead, 1,500, and a little bit of change, 1,750 perhaps experience lead. They're looking good here in the laning stage. Yeah, remember the team composition of Rising Star wants to go for those solo kills. It's, it's 
Disruption into Sha Soul Catcher into LSA or Clockwork Cook into like a single stun from Alchemist. It is all single target. And when you give Brax this kind of start on the top lane, it looks like he's gonna find himself another solo kill. Clockwork Hook gets blocked up here. No mana on Brax just yet. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's gonna bottle up. Is, is Templar Assassin coming in? XCD, if he gets to those traps, he's gonna get slowed down. He turns around. Meanwhile, bottom lane, it's gonna be 1437 on the run. Shout to Uji trying to draw him down. He's got the face boots. He'll be able to do it. Now they go on to super. They're looking for the counter kill here. And it looks like Super should be falling. Sal Salve's up. Jukes through the trees. Pycat does have one more Sakuchi, but the stun is there. Diving the tower now would be a little bit greedy. He's not going to go for it. He'll back off. He'll chip away at Shoutuji in the end. And Shoutuji actually just going to stand there and slap him down with that big juggernaut sword of his. So in the end, well, G looking very Midling. strong. Lurking mid. He's got the meld crits. He's going to go in. I don't know if it's a, not a long enough stun. It doesn't look like it. A third trap thrown out. Air. Oh. G. Oh, didn't factor in the magic stick in the end. Air. Able to pop that at the last possible second and live. Just a miscalculation there from G. Would have had the kill if he had just chased through it, but thought he had it without it. I'm completely surprised G made that kind of play. That, that's not a play that you expect. Oh, what a play by Shout to G. Uh, Dodging a bro. Uh, yeah, nicely done. Yeah. That's that's not the plays that you, you expect a solo mid player of, of G's caliber. He just kind of misfactored a magic stick, missed a kill, and he's still dominating the mid lane, like, absolutely hard, but still, it's... It, it does happen, but again, I, I feel for LGDN just... They want G to have that powerful start. Uh, yeah. Not not necessarily because of their lineup, because their lineup is actually a very strong five-man just group up and fight lineup, but more because I just feel like this team kind of needs that jump start. Like, this is a team that just, it feels like LGDN just doesn't have that spark or that fire, and G is definitely their most fiery and aggressive player. See, he has that explosive start, and he can definitely carry this team. And, well, in spite of the fact he doesn't find the kill there, he's still 39 and 14. He's still winning this middle lane very heavily in air. Well, he's getting levels, but that's about it. We're not going to see that early mech on Solom at Alchemist this game. Yeah. And this is uh, very reminiscent of the, the Moscow 5G that just goes to Storm Spirit and gets 20 Bloodstone charges by 10 minutes in and just solo handily wins the game. And let's see if he's going to do it this one. Traps all over the river, trying to spot the 8 minute rune. And he could basically do whatever he wants. He's not even in fear of leaving the lane and having Alchemist push it out a little bit because Alchemist, after he push it out towards the river, he, Alchemist should know that there's traps on the map. And he just can't push past this point or he'll be dead. And look at that, Templar Assassin. When, when you're lucky, you're good as well. You find yourself double damage, and it looks like we might see some kills on the bot lane. Yeah, it's better to be both. It's yeah. not better to be lucky than good. It's better to be both than G, lucky and good this game. And, well, he's got the DD. Maybe it's one of those games where you even just rush the blink dagger. I mean, as of late, we've seen the drums phase, or, or not the drums phase, but the drums Yasha build become a lot more popular. I think we even saw one of the orange players use that build the other he's day. He's going to be going to spill this game. But I, I think blink dagger could be decent. Yeah, like you said, it looks like he'll go for the drums, at least picking up the bracer now, which... I think is a fine choice. He's ultimately going to be their main damage dealer. Weaver is just not a hard carry and not with the amount Pycat's farming. So I think it's a fine choice. Yeah, especially considering the fact that there is an asset cloud on the ground. Like, it's, it's harder to blink in some of these long chasing team fights. And more importantly, you, you recognize that there is Laguna Blade on the map. And having extra HPs through the string treads as well as bracers, definitely not a bad uh, addition. And looks like he's going to siege in this mid tower. Loaded. Fantastic ward here for Misery. Just plops it down behind the tier one, but. Perhaps even better awareness from air. Lurking in the jungle, not going to get caught. XDD will TP in mid. This has been spotted out, of course, by that Observer Ward, but maybe he'll go for a hook here. If he did, it could be dangerous. Pycat, no TP. Actually, 1437, no TP. So they'll sit bottom. They'll continue to get levels and farm there. And for the time being, both teams roaming around, but nobody really accomplishing things here. We're now 10 minutes in. We'll take another look at the graphs, and it's about a 2K gold lead for LGDN. Uh, just under a 2K experience lead. The big thing for me is that LGDN, it's not so much the amount of an advantage they're having, it's the fact that they're finally having an advantage, Lumi, because it feels like it's been a while since they've had one in a, in a big game. Yeah, generally they pick very safe lineups where, you know, they, they will try to grind you out in a game. It's very rare that they pick a lineup like this, uh, where you rely on early game burst damage coming out from Visage and, and basically just kind of storm out of gates, and so far it's working out very beautifully, G. Again, continuing to snowball out of control. 10 minute brood, gonna well, get snatched up top. I don't know if I would say snowballing out of control, but he's definitely he's having 3 a good 0 and 0. Yeah, he's 55 15. I don't know. End of the day, he's he he got those two early kills, but he's been pretty slow in terms of the action since then. They'll top. search Misery in. They want to go on XDD. He does get off his battery assault. Cogs could be very devastating here. It'll push everyone away. G's trapped out. He tries to jump in, but this could be dangerous. XDD actually lobbing a hook shot in there. Looks like 1437 will go down to the acid. The turnaround. LGD and rotate four heroes to the top lane. You they get not. nothing. 
and it's all because of the cogs. You do not dive a clockwork. It doesn't matter if you have four. That's that's the oh, reason why power they cogs. They want PyCat bottom lane. They've got the Omni Slash. PyCat has time lapse, but he could be in a lot of trouble. Omni's going to come through. Blown up in a hurry. Now G's going to join the fight, but the healing ward's there. You can't slow him when he's got the Blade Fury going, and he'll actually man back Shout up. Shout 2G. Wow, overextension there by Shout 2G. Definitely could have just ran to the tower and lived, but thought, I can remove these refraction charges with Blade Fury. I can turn this one around. He was very wrong. Yeah, he was indeed. Very, I mean, very have wrong. He, have you seen G's uh, Templar Assassin? He's the person that got first blood on your team, so or against your team. And uh, well, that's that's a quick drums. We're seeing 11 minutes drums, uh, treads, and top bottom. lane burrow strike in on super. He's ex overextend and he'll get picked off here as well. Maybe not. Rotation in from XDD. Oh, the commitment there from Misery. He wanted that kill. He's gonna pay with his life. One more shadow poison brings him down. He could have just backed off, but he got greedy and. The cogs once again. LGD consistently underestimating these here in game two. Yeah, the amount of cog blocks this game is, is just absolutely amazing. And the amount of inappropriate things chat is about to say <laughs> is going to be pretty hey, amazing. Hey, you know, it's just I'm cog gonna, blocks. I'm going to ask you to bring up the chat while I continue observing the game. I, I, I can't. I, I got to watch for, for <laughs> more I cog blocks. Well, XDD though, farming up top. Teleportation yeah. going on the bottling here. Templar Assassin, even though he's actually got all these items, it seems like he's not really finding a ton of kill. I think th there's going to well, be one kill here. Yeah, Mophie. He's about to find one here. Mophie, yeah. stick charge is not going to matter. Blown up in a hurry. Jeez. Now maybe it's fair to call it snowballing. 5 and 0, 12 yep. minutes in, and picked up two kills in the mid game. For me, that's the big thing. The Vio Hook mid, though. Catching out 14 37, latching him there. But is it a mistake once again? The teams that are diving seem to be overextending time and time again. XDD, what a beautiful back from Brack. Pull. Pulling two back to max range, but it won't be enough to find that secondary kill, at least not yet. PyCat, well, not going to commit fully here, but they do get the clockwork. And for me, it's just neither team should be aggressive, Lumi, because every time they tower dive, every time they overextend, or every time they get aggressive, it's overextending. Yeah, but both teams have very, by nature, aggressive lineup, right? Nobody's really farming. I mean, sure, there's an alchemist, but he's not playing that one roll alchemist. He's only got that one point greed will greed. You have, you have a Juggernaut, you have a Templar Assassin. Speaking of that Juggernaut, might be a little bit trouble in this bot lane. Traps after him. But yeah, I mean, when you have an aggressive lineup, you just, I guess, don't want to farm with it and they, they tire dive. Well, for Rising Stars, I think considering they have Greevil's Greed and they've just got this very strong defensive lineup, they're the ones who do want to sit back. As for LGDN, I think they want to be aggressive, but maybe not this second. I mean, farm the enemy jungle, sure, kind of pressure them, sure, but I don't think they need to be diving for kills. They've got the mech up on Brax. They can use this to siege towers to just kind of group up and fight. But it can be a methodical fight. I don't feel it has to be a hyper-aggressive one. And they do have the familiars now as well for 1437. So everything coming together here for LGDN. They now lead by a little bit over 2k experience, 3k gold. This is a substantial lead. And the big thing above all else is going to be the mech on Brax. Here comes the push mid. Yeah, I agree. I, I think if you want to make those dives, you make the safer ones. You have to mech to, to bail you out. You have your, your next tier of items, like a Yasha, but no, no it's uh -oh. going to be Ogre Club. Super might die here to some familiars. Double stun, not really microed perfectly. Slow here. Well, they. I don't know if they want to dive this anyway. There's still disruption available. Yeah. G's thinking about it. He's running into five. Wow. G Dota for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, and they're not done yet. Brax is going to come in, catches out three. That isn't going to be enough. That's the question, though. The burrow through only clips out 2G. They both end up getting stunned by the Alchemist. Now the wall's dropped as well. XDD going to blade fury, or rather, Shout 2G is going to blade fury. XDD's just going to run. <laughs> Dex Shout 2G in a world of trouble. He's already popped out and he slashed, and this is where Darkseer does so much work. When you're on the run, you can't escape. There's no running from LGD. They're going to get a triple kill on G. It's definitely a snowball now, Lumi. Looking at G, 8, 0, and 0. He's had a lot of help to get rolling, but now he's cruising down the hill. Remember what I said during the draft? You just don't give a Templar Assassin a triple kill during the mid game? That's exactly what they did in and this game. Now the game is going to be very, very tough for Rising I mean, stars. you were jokingly saying, oh, guys, uh, LG and got Visage. We're going to go to game three. I was like, no, that can't happen. It's. Well, <laughs> not sure if this is a Visage, but... As, as much as I'm sure AUI would be trying to say it's the Visage this game, it's, it's really It's, it's really all not. the TA. It's all the TA. It's times. the TA, and it's the movement of Misery. Misery Sandcane has yeah. really broken this game open. Setting up G multiple times there. The first blood, and then that second kill. He got the ball rolling, and now G is just... Well, he's having fun. Well, they're going to try to siege down a Tier 1 tower as well. The early that mech also tower. puts a big pressure on, like, for example, Laguna Blade or any type of single target initiation coming from Rising Star. They just don't even have nearly enough damage to compete. And they're going to lose yet another tower without being able to siege it. In fact, if LGN wants to push for Tier 2, no, they won't. They're going to defend their Tier 1 mid or at least try to. As Rising Star forcing some issue, as LGA Brax is going to 
Well, they do have this mech on air. It's coming now in the courier, as well as healing ward. Rising stars. We can't underestimate their ability to group just because they have healing ward and mech and cogs. I mean, these three together but the back could make things hard, but the backstab's coming in. It's going to be super XDD. Both slowed up. Two traps slowing two heroes both times. Now back, back in. Only one familiar stun to connect, but super in a lot of trouble. One more auto attack will bring him down. Now XDD isolated and picked. And G is just having a blast this game. Godlike already. 9 0 0. They could easily go Roche, but it looks like they want to just take the tier two bottom and then probably go back for it. LGD Shout in a Tuji. commanding position. They might find another kill here on Chautuji. He's got the spin to win. He's got the, the TP out, but can he get it off in time? He'll TP out now, and it looks like he should be able to escape. Yep. Wow. LGDN, powerful start. I mean, this is where you say, hey, guys, we do have the minus armor. Let's go in the pit, take that Aegis, get our Yasha quick, get whatever item that we need quick, and start working on those tier twos, because at this point, Rising Star has just got nothing. Yeah, I kind of would have preferred to just see an early medallion here on 1437 to make the Roche a bit easier, but they can do it without it, and they may have the medallion after they take this tower, after this next fight. So by no means a bad item pickup, but I kind of want to see the medallion next. So we'll see. Maybe PyCat will be the one to go for it. Sitting now on... A little bit of gold. Actually, is there something on the courier for him? It's going to be an ogre club, so going BKB, and that's going to be... I think it's fine because they're leading like this, and it'll allow them just to take some aggressive team fights and not overextend. And Well, they'll back off now, Lumi. They're not going to commit to this push just yet. I feel that by far he's probably the squishiest here on the map. Like, Sand King, you, you probably want to, don't want to drop a Laguna Blade on him, but you'll definitely drop one on PyCat, and he's probably the only one going to die if they're going to be doing some big dives. So and they're we'll going to have double BKB as well. Right, He's so already got his up. So like, might as well get that safe insurance play. May, may not be the highest damaging item, but it's still a very good item. And PyCat will back off now. Maybe they'll even look towards the Roche pit soon for LGDN uh, for the time being. They're going to head towards mid. They do have to push that lane back out. They are going to go into the pit now. PyCat will be there. No medallion, but again, they still have meld. So it's not like Roche is hard by any means. Even drum charge is available if they'd like. And... I guess, end of the day, Rising Stars, probably not going to contest this anyway, so who cares how long it takes? Yeah, they, they j just can't. I mean, yeah. Tier 1 Tower, maybe you're going to lose a Tier 1 Tower for this, but I don't really think so at all. I mean, look at Shao Tuji. As your one-row Juggernaut's got face drums at 17, 18 minutes, which is not a fair comparison to say at all, because he's, he's got shut down on the bot lane and died multiple times. But it's really not going to cut it this game. End right. of the day, that's not going to out-carry a Templar Assassin who's already got a BKB, a Treads, and Drums of her own. That 2G continues to split push, and he's gonna have to pressure the tier 2 hard. In fact, he, I think they're looking for a trade. This is a smart move. You can't defend your tier 2 on your own. Might as well try to attempt to trade for it. For LGD, will they be content to trade? We've seen LGD China just doesn't make trades anymore, at or least not DK. when they're winning. Yeah. And DK, those two teams, they don't really trade. They just they take your towers and they defend their own, at least when they're winning. And for LGD, well, they've given up the tier 1 top, but looks like they will be defending the tier 2. and. For Rising Stars, this is where you just bide your time. You go, oh, actually Shadow Blade for Shao Tuji. Interesting little pickup here on him, but uh, anything that just stalls the game and lets you split push, I feel, is what they want. They don't really want to be taking fights now, especially not while that Aegis is up. I, I, I personally think that Juggernaut going for Shadow Blade is maybe a patch ago might be a little bit better, but now since the Shadow Blade got the 8 damage nerf, maybe not as good. You expect it to, to kind of do a ton of carry. Shadow Blade's a lot more of kind of roaming, split pushing, ganking kind of item. And we'll see if it's going to pay off here, but it's like you say, it's an item to avoid fights, and that's that's what Rising Star needs to do right it's now. It's also, it's still a pretty easy item to build. That's the other consideration. You could go Yasha here, but it'll force LGD in at least to buy some sentries, maybe that early gem for them, and uh, potentially allow Shoutuji to live. They'll surge in misery now. They look for the burrow, but once again, Shoutuji with the very quick reactions. Unfortunately, his TP was cooling down, so he wasn't able to use it. Didn't need to in the end. Now the cavalry will arrive. It comes in the form of a clockwork for XDD, and then Mofi's Lena, they're roaming in right now. Familiar's gonna be lurking in the jungle. The rocket will fly as well. They'll spot out Brax, and he'll surge towards the southern tree line. Misery lurking here, it does have the epicenter available. Oh, this could be an interesting fight. Will he get off a good epi? He'll eat an iron shell, and now he may be surging. God's in. coming in from north right uh -oh. now. Oh, this could be bad. G's gonna lead the way. The familiar's done. Two familiars catches out too. Epi being channeled. The cogs are too late to cancel the epi. They get vacuum back into it. Air, all sorts of trouble. XDD, all sorts of trouble. Wanted to hook to freedom. He won't get that hook to freedom. He'll melt as well. LGD just overrunning and overwhelming Rising Stars here in Game 2. They now lead by quite a lot. 6k gold, 9k experience, and looking at a Tier 2 bottom. They're just getting everything they want. I mean, we always talk about Misery's Chan Enchantress, but it's, it's actually Sanking. It seems like every time he plays Sanking, he has performance like these. 
it, it's just spectacular. The bur the burrow strike into two, and the vacuum was beautiful as well because it, it, the cogs worked against them. Uh, LGD and they're pushing it to the limit here in game two, and uh, we'll see what they do the rest of the way. But really, just taking all these aggressive, scrappy fights, and it's just a good lineup to do it. This is why the darks here was their sig one of their signature heroes for so long. You get that early mech, you have these chaotic team fights, and that's where a player like G can really start to have a big impact. He's got the additional safety and ability to be aggressive from the Mac and the Surge as well. Such a potent combo. Reminds you a lot of Dignitas, who also favor this combo, but LGD having a fantastic game here in game number two. And they take this game, if they do it, sets up a pretty exciting game three. Yeah, both these games have been somewhat one-sided. Oh man, these familiars also stealing some farm away from the jungle. Brutal by misery. Yeah. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> well, there's a Juggernaut Shadow Blade, so let's see how he plays it. Is it going to be a Shadow Blade uh, to use to split push? Or is it going to be a Shadow Blade that gives them the early game damage to maybe look for a fight? So far, looks like they're looking for a pickoff as 3 smoke uh, in their base. With LGDN, they've been at least publicly obsess somewhat obsessed with this idea of breaking the base. They talked about it all the way back in G League. It's always been something that's been a priority for them with their drafts, with their item selection. And I guess the question is now, Lumi, how good is this lineup at breaking the base? You look at LGDN, their current position, do they have enough? Can they do it now? If not, what do they need to make it happen? That's a really, really bad lineup to break the base. How do you break the base, right? I mean, I think y you hope for a good vacuum. You hope for somebody to get pick off outside the map. But aside from that, I just don't see them breaking the base. unless They, they do have the BKBs, I guess, but do you really want to pop those to hit a tower? Right, and, and those, I mean, sure, the cogs don't push you back anymore, but you can still get trapped into the cogs, and it doesn't matter if you have BKB then. You're still going to get focused, so... The uh, good news is they have a Blink Dagger Misery, so those pickoffs you mentioned, if he wants to buy the Blink Dagger, will be a little bit easier to come by. I'm surprised he hasn't bought it right now and, and flowing it out for the next team fight. We'll see, maybe he feels he doesn't need it. There is Surge at his side, which is pretty good. He'll, buy, he'll go for the Blink Dagger in the end, maybe just talking it out with his team. And now LGD, they'll be working on this Tier 2 mid. Slow and methodical, the Outer Tower shouldn't be the problem. It's going to be the actual base that'll be the real test for them. And for Rising Stars... Split pushing it out. Shout to G. He'll keep on going on this bottom lane. He wants to draw LGD in back. It looks like he'll be able to do it. Maybe not, but at least he'll push the lane into the tower. Then he'll go farm the woods. Thing is, Juggernaut and Alchemist have to get farmed this game. I don't think it's enough to get just one of them big. And right now, Alchemist working towards a Shadow Blade of his own, but having gone for the early mech won't be doing damage for quite some time. I, I don't like this, the fact that there's now going to be two Shadow Blades up on the Radiant side. It just doubles the effectiveness of each sentry. Uh, you talked about how Shadow Blade forces sentry out. At this point, it's not even being forced. Like, we'll happily get sentries. Uh, at the same time, you know... And, and 100 gold is not that hard to come by for LGDM. When they're knocking down towers left and right. But they're going lane. in now, though. G's going to initiate on Mophie. He gets disrupted. Can he get out of here? The familiar stuns are going to prevent it. Mophie blown up in a hurry. There's pickoff number one. And with the blink dagger on Sand King, this could easily just fall apart here for Rising Stars. Already trailing by a lot. Already in all sorts of trouble. LGD it. Maybe they don't go high ground now, but I feel... If they want to, they may have just enough. They'll back off. They will play it safe. Yeah, it's actually hard to go high ground against Acid Spray, who uh, disables your Blink Dagger and Sand King, who, who makes the creep wave very easily uh, breakable. And, 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 and removes Refraction as well. Right, and you're diving up a choke against Clockwork Cogs, against Blade Fury, and all these kind of dangerous AoE-based spells. And oh, but they're going to go in now. Misery, he'll blink in. He'll burrow out XDD. Is he the one you want? With that amount of burst damage, sure. Hell yeah, why not? They're now going to work on the tower soon, I imagine. The creep wave dying pretty quickly. Shout to Uji coming in. He does have a Blade Fury. They want to farm these familiars up. Can they do it? They do get them both. Nope, Actually, no, resummon. resummon. Resummon at the last possible second by 1437. Good news is, well, if he loses them again, LGD won't have a powerful tool in their arsenal. But they still have their BKB on G. Aegis has long since expired, and now they'll look to try and take this Rax. Misery, he'll be on the back lines. The stun only clips one. They were looking for a multiple hero stun. They can't quite get it. An endless barrage of Shadow Poison, Acid Spray, all the poisons coming out. And LGD, like you said, it's actually very hard to push into this. Sure, they don't have a mag, a huge AoE combo, but... Uh oh looks like Shao Chiji. He wants a little spam. bit more. He's actually... Going very far forward. Is he going to Blade Fury? Where's the Omni Slash? Nothing just yet. Blade Fury, here comes. They want to focus down on G. Does he have Aegis? No, Aegis expired. Pops the BKB. He's on the run, but the Epicenter as well as the Vacuum. The damage output is just immense on the Rising Star. And I just don't think they win this one. Shout out to on the run. Is he dusted? No. No Sentry Ward or Dust. It's, they're not prepared. I'm completely surprised. What? Well, Alchemist, does he have buyback is the question. No buyback on him. Lena, no buyback on her. So it is going to be a 3v5. But Chao Tuji, <laughs> what a cheeky little bugger this one. <laughs> Pulling the creep way back. Such a nuisance. He's up to 3k gold off of that fight. 
And oh. one, of, one of the issues there, well, he's actually on the run. He'll try to TP out, and yeah. there's no way to cancel this. But one of the issues there was G just didn't get off his BKB. Very long time where I thought he could have popped it, maybe could have lived, but not able to get it off. And oh, you can't rely on refraction. It's got, by the time he BKB'd, it was just a one-hit Omni Slash with like 10 HP to bring him down. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was really, really poor play from LG and supports. You know there's double shadow blades up on the enemy side. How do you push without sentry or without gem. dust or, or dust. gem? It, it's it's a it's a move that you see in in a lot more public games, and I just I'm oh. surprised that LGD made that mistake. Oh, LGD could be in a bit of trouble here. Super is gonna lurch forward, but cannot quite connect there on the gank. If they connect on that smoke gank, I think this game maybe feels a little bit different. End of the day for LGD and Roche number two is coming soon. They do have a 12k gold lead, a 13k experience lead. The rap on this team, Lumi, has been that they just don't win those late games. If they're not really far ahead, th they're a team that most of their wins, I would say, come around that 30-minute mark or so, maybe 35 to 40 minutes. Past 40, past 50 minutes, they have generally struggled. That's traditionally been their biggest problem. They had, I think they've had one big signature late game win, but that's really about it. We'll see if that's an issue against Rising Stars. Rising Stars, definitely not the scariest team from China, but a strong, solid team who can surprise you and... I don't think you can count these guys out for LGD, and, and they're definitely not counting them out. They're playing very conservatively for the most part. Yeah, LGD is basically waiting for the next Roshan, which is going to spawn in about a minute or so. Gem is now up on Misery, so he's looking for some D-Ward action over these clips and whatnot. And uh, th those double Shadow Blades, well, not going to be as effective anymore. Yeah, now, now you've invested 6k team gold into two items that just help you split push. That's yeah. all they really do. I mean, it gives you attack speed and damage, but that's that's really not not the true, the only reason you get it for Shao Tuju trying to spin himself away. Are we going to see a Sir Sankey? No, Sankey's going to get Blink Lord. Invisibility not helping out here, and now we see why. Uh -oh. No, the disengage coming up from Clockwork. Clockwork now traps himself. Now we go on the other side of those cogs. Two, three, man. Sun BKB very early. BKB used this time, so G didn't use it last time. Now use it very early, but Great, great sacrifice there by the clock. But no BKB for G now. You actually tried your best to kind of kill G and, and hold off this push once again. Are, are they going to commit? I imagine it'll just be a slow siege. Try and keep this lane pushed in and then back off and go for Roche. Because if you, if actually, if you just push the lane in like this and then head straight to Roche with their amount of physical damage between the familiars and medallion uh, or, or meld, I don't actually think Rising Stars could even get there in time, even if they smoke for the base. So LGD and playing this one well, they'll go straight back to the pit now. Roche. Well, he should be up, and indeed he is. Even if Rising Star smoked right now and came to the pit, I don't know if they'd get here in time. And if they did, it would be coming into Vacuum, Shiva's, Epicenter, Wall, a world of pain. And yeah, too they're much not going to take that fight. Yeah, now, BKB's up here on the Juggernaut. I'm not sure whether I like that item choice. On one end, it does block you a, a ton of magical damage coming out from things like Vistage, as well as Sanking. But on the other, G doesn't care. Weaver doesn't care. They, they will just right-click you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Juggernaut going BKV. How much does this really do for Shaotuji? I don't really know why he feels forced into it because there's no Orchid, which is the main consideration. That's where you're like sort of like a life stealer, where if you can't get your Blade Fury off, you can't drop the Healing Ward, you can't Omni Slash. Maybe you need a BKV, but there's none of that nonsense this game. I, I feel it's a game where Shaotuji just needs raw right click damage or something to help him tank through the fights. An Assault Curass, a Butterfly, maybe even a Manta, but. He'll go BKB now, and I guess it does allow him to to kind of punish the supports. If he can isolate a backline hero, the BKB will allow him to right-click them. At this point, Blade Fury doesn't do damage, but the auto attacks from Juggernaut will. So yeah, he's playing it really like an anti-mage that split push that just farms over the map and enters as a team fight with the BKB and just trying to be a menace, which is not very frequently seen on a one-row Juggernaut, but definitely can be played. Let's not forget that Juggernaut has the best damaging crit in the game in terms of average damage output and if he gets enough item he can be a menace uh so Kuchi already used on top lane here is he gonna go for the omni slash kill no just yeah, hey straight away. on pie cat bkb on pie cat well it would be a pretty hard kill to say the least with the next creep wave coming with the tp support available bottom lane though the fight is broken out is that really an aganim scepter it is 1437 aganim's up 30 minutes in this is some pretty impressive farm on the the visage yeah <laughs> 80% win rate with Scepter. Wow, that's pretty scary. I mean, when you snowball hard enough yeah. to get a Scepter, generally you don't, you don't lose games right. like that. This, this, is like, this is like if you have a Divine Rapier, you're probably winning most games, because normally you buy those in garbage time, but, well, we'll see. Yeah. Lina, level 10. Does have a Force Staff, though. That's kind of the key item pickup here. I, I want to say Rising Stars actually in a more decent position than this game shows even the fact that they're down by 13 kills down by what 13,000 gold as well as 16,000 experience 
I think they have a decent chance in terms of holding out this mid game and maybe even go for a late game victory. Xiao Tuji on the Juggernaut, not exactly going for the ultra late game carry items, and Air not going for the ultra late game farming build because he's got Shadow Blade and Mech. But if the game lasts long enough, they could do it. Yeah, maybe they just can. And Mantis style now up for G. He's starting to hit that point where TA just goes and kills everyone in the next fight. If he pops the BKB, the Mantis style at the right moment could be an absolute disaster. Rising Stars, but will G find that opening? We'll have to wait and see. LGD going to be pushy in this bottom lane. Five heroes now grouped up. Familiars will head top, or rather, sorry, Illusions, not Familiars. Uh, Templar Assassin Illusions to kind of slow down that push. Do what they can. A pretty good CG lineup now. Triple Familiar, Weaver, who's just hard to go on with a BKB, a Demon Edge, uh, as well as Surge on his side. And, and then the TA with a BKB, a Manta, and an Aegis. They're going to work on the tower here. This will be hard to fight. Pycat does get caught. Stunned under the tower. Not the one you want to go on unless you're confident. You can kill him from full HP. He'll time lapse. They may wait for that to cool down to really recommit, but for the time being, it's the COG spam. They want to kill off these familiars. They can't quite do it. The COGs will bounce G back for the time being, and LGD, a slow and steady siege. G, maybe. It's actually a siege, though. As a spray, COGs in front, They've rockets. They've done a little, a, a very light siege. A light siege. They've I mean, done a little bit of damage here. Remember the siege up on the top lane. I'm confused as to why they're not sticking to one single lane now. They're sticking to bot. I think it was just, hey, we're in the neighborhood, guys. Sure, fair. <laughs> but I'm I, hungry. Let's go to the closest pizza joint. I think the more time they spent here and the, the more time that they're defending, like the Radiant's actually farming decently on, on these creeps. Juggernaut could kind of pop out on the other lanes and start slip pushing maybe for, for a little bit. Sure, the Dire could be farming the enemy jungle as well, but at the same time, as the longer the game goes, LG is losing their lead tiny by tiny bit. Their relative lead grows less. Sure, right. the, the, the flat gold advantage continues to increase, but you look at the ratio of the gold earned for each team, and well, it's going to be a bit less, less for Rising Stars, who actually haven't bought back that much. That's the other consideration. Sometimes a team might not be behind that much, but they've actually wasted a lot of golden buybacks. You look at Rising Stars, they, they haven't back really at all this game? I, don't I don't think, think they have. Yeah. So yeah, there's really no significant difference there. And Juggernaut's just like, yeah, I'll go top now and split push. And I do want to point out, Air is going BKB as well. So he's gone Shadow Blade, now he'll go BKB, not going Assault Curse against a Templar Assassin and a Weaver. I feel it's just, it's such a great item on Alchemist, period. And then especially this game, you really would benefit from helping keep your teammates alive a little bit longer. It, it feels like it's a very similar... Uh, analogy that we talked about buyback to, to save your base that kind of thing it's it's an item type you purchase to save you, you right now for team fights it, it's not a great late game extension but it's definitely an item that helps you kind of secure your your advantages now i'm, and I'm fine with outgoing yeah. bkb i'm fine with juggernaut doing it but i feel like two someone's got to be someone's got to be looking after the late game like you said so. Well, I, maybe that's going to come in the Juggernaut, who's still split pushing. Oh, they're going to jump in up. now. Burrow on two. The Swarm follows up. Vacuum back into the G side blades. My goodness. What a perfect, absolutely fantastic team fight. Now the Cog's going to push G back right as his BKB wears off. He's still going in. Super, well, low, but not out of the fight yet. Has G overextended here. He still has the Aegis, but he's probably going to drop. Still alive. Burrow through. Blink stun. Only catches one this time. Somehow able to dodge it. Islet Juggernaut. Shao Tuji executes him. Slicing and dicing with the Omni. Now manning up, but he's not going to win this fight. BKB or not, he'll go down as well. And I think we could see Rising Stars maybe just a bit too far behind here game two. Well, it's I'm not sure whether they get this Rax. These birds are being a menace, but the hook is going to come right in. Where's the stun? The stun's going to hit on G. He's got the refraction right now. The birds of refraction. Everything focused. Should be focused on the Rax. And Pycat comes in with the BKB. Focusing on Shao Tuji. Shao Tuji already bought back. He's on the run, but the gem is on him. You cannot run away from this team. He's trying his best to spin. He's now going right back on Brax. He might get the kill. Oh yes, my he God. does. He's he will get the kill, but he's going to be dead. No buyback. You got to keep in mind. And the two supports are on the run. Did they actually kill Weaver? They've driven him away. There's a ring of Basalis somewhere sitting on the ground, but they hold. What was that chase? Why did they chase him that far? They chased him all the way from here. Up to here, they could have just taken racks, but LGDN, well, they really hunted for kills there, and they paid heavily. That was four heroes dead, and an Aegis blown as well. Good news for them is Clockwork bought back, Shadow Demon bought back, and Juggernaut bought back. So end of the day, maybe LGDN are still okay after that, but that was just greedy. But I mean, yeah, you, you talked about the buyback, but what the, the, the other flip situation is you could have forced those buybacks. And you can take it right. Yeah, right. Because remember, on this bot lane right here in this portion of the map, there was a cluster F of all the illusions, all the birds, all the Templar assassin illusions. They could have just all went here, right here. And, and look how uh, low the Rex is. That's that's like five five seconds at most of all those units hitting the Rex, if not less. Yep. 
Could have been easy racks. But LGDN, well, in spite of that fact, they did get the tier three. So the next time they fight bottom lane, it will be a bit easier for them. They haven't taken game two yet. Maybe I was a bit hasty in saying they were in good position there. That overextension was immense. And let's see if they have that next level of aggression to take the game. G as well. The, has the farm stopped for him? Has his item progression slowed down? No new items pick up. In fact, no gold after that fight to buy any. So just the Manta, the Crystalis he already had. And, well, LGDN. Seems like things may have slowed down a bit for them. Well, Pycat got himself an MKB, so that's definitely ah, yes, that's true. Uh, a well, well welcome addition to their damage output. And with Gemini attack, it's, it's quite decent. Xiao Tuji continuing to split push up top, 1k go on the bank. No buyback for him for the next 6 minutes, so might as well pick up something. He sees Misery. Uh oh. Uh oh. They need some detection. Misery lurking in the trees. Oh, oh, here comes air. If they get the stun off, bad. the stun. Bam! Lobbed in from long range. <laughs> Pow! Mother so effer and down he'll go. Misery. Surprise. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that was that was a well executed gank. And Misery, well, maybe he had a second there to blink away, but not able to react in time. Well, and uh, now they, they're gonna they gotta get ready to defend on the bot lane. One thing that Rising Star has been doing so well is when they see the push coming, they layer cogs, they layer acid spray in the front. And this is not too much of a walk for LGG to just just plop up and start focusing on the melee racks. They, they gotta get in position. Here comes the TP. LGD in. They'll push that bottom lane in, they'll back off and they may be feeling a little bit nervous here. You know, game two, you are on the ropes ultimately. Even if you're leading this game, if you lose the game, you're out of the Dota 2 Super League. You'll be out of another Chinese event after coming so close in G League Season 2. So for them, it looks like they'll be waiting for that third Roshan. And this one will be Aegis as well as Cheese, I believe. So well, is it going to be enough at that point, Luby? Do you think that's all they need to win this game? I, I, I think so, because you look at how the last team fight went. It, you focus, you force out three buybacks, and three buybacks, you, you still won that team fight. Um, they still could have got the racks, so the base objective is still very reachable. It, it just depends on how many items that Rising Star pick up in this time till the next Roshan. So I think Juggernaut is at least going to have his Mantis out. Maybe even a, a Ultimate Orb. Uh-oh. Xiao Tuji trying to Blade Fury TP out. There's no MKB proc there. I do believe MKB procs on range is magical. Oh, is it? Even the, even the mini stun effect? Yeah, I think it, on, on physical hits, or on melee units, sorry. It, it's, it's physical. On, on I, wasn't, range. I wasn't sure if they actually ported that to Dota 2. I know that was a Dota 1 That's mechanic. a Dota 1 thing, so I'm not sure if it's, it is like that. Well, okay, well, he didn't get bashed there, and it was 3 or 4 attacks, so yeah. maybe not. But either way, it felt, it felt a little risky, but maybe it wasn't. Well, here comes a big smoke gank. Yeah, the, the big question is how much uh -oh. farm... They're going to fight G. They will. This will be a big kill if they can bring him down. He doesn't have refraction for long. There's an Omni available as well. G's going to get picked off. Remember that Roche is coming soon. Hook. XDD Hook. pump fake, <laughs> punk fake, summoning his inner Kabu. But Kabu actually throws the hook and lands it in the end in most cases. And we won't see it here. Roche coming right now, and this may force G to buy back. Uh, I mean, but he can't because he just bought the data. He doesn't list. have buy back. But look at the creep we on the bot lane, and you got to send somebody to defend. This is kind of do or die situation. Rising Star sensing the fact that they may have find the opening in the game, and they're just going to go for it. You go big or you go home. And they're just clumping on this Roche. This gives Aegis and Cheese. This is the biggest break they have caught this entire game. I mean, keep in mind, there is that epicenter Burrow Strike combo. They're just going to smoke and head mid. They. Well, what are they doing here? Now bottom lane, they're going to go in. Rax trying to draw the TPs back. They've already taken that Aegis. XDD, he'll even defend the base. They're not going to get Rax. Masterful outmaneuvering by Rising Stars. Finding that pick off G. Just spent the gold on Daedalus. If he can buy back there, they at least get the Aegis. The Courier will be sniped for the Radiant side, but we'll quickly check. And didn't have any items, so not really the biggest deal at this point in the game. Truth be told. And Rising Stars still in this game, Lumi. This is definitely a game and right now. And that's cheese as well. Yeah, the familiars on the meantime trying to backdoor on the bot uh, with the three, and unfortunately it wasn't enough. Uh, now there's a basher on Xiao Tuji, and that's a way to actually deal with uh, the, the BKB uh, Templar Assassin. Definitely a way to deal with the, the Weaver uh -oh. once he gets Abyssal. Air's oh. in a lot of trouble. He's, He's going to get cheese. caught out top lane. He does have cheese. BKB as well. He doesn't want to have to use that cheese yet, but Pycat's going to force him to. No, he won't in the end. Air. Wow, he plays with fire, but he lives. Well, he did a buyback at the end of the day, so holds on to the cheese and, and gets away too. Oh no, he, he wants to hold on to the go for the next item. They need that item badly, but... Be it a Shiva's or an AC, either one wouldn't be bad this game, but they really need that next what item. What would you go for? Do you want to go for AC that ultimately lends himself to a better late game, or do you say, hey, we need an item now. Let's get the Shiva's. We'll see. It's a tough call for LGD. I mean, I think any AoE is going to be helpful just to kind of clear out those illusions from Darkseer and as well as just slow down some of these heroes like Sand King, uh, the Templar Assassin, the team fight. Sure, there's Surge, but you can't Surge everyone. I would maybe lean towards the Shivas now, but AC, 
AC is the better late game choice. If he can farm to that, that's what he should go for. But, well, we'll see if he can get to that point. Yeah, I feel that if you're perhaps sieging right now, I think AC is definitely a lot better. But it's an item that synergized really well the way that they're defending so far, right? It's just another layer of more shit to be thrown in front of the lanes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. More, they're just shoveling all sorts of nukes. It's, it really is like shoveling well, uh, shit, like you said, or even coal into the, the steam engine. You know, it's just it's the poison spray, it's the, the juggernaut blade fury, the... The the co the cogs, cogs coming out the LSA, rockets. LSA dragon slaves. Is just uh, like I, I kind of like the, the shoveling shit analogy. <laughs> yeah. uh, we won't be using that sort of language at some LAN events, but uh, we'll get away with it here at the Beyond the Summit Studio. So G will push in this bottom lane, and I guess the good news is, sure they don't have Aegis Cheese, but I think I'll have buyback before this next fight. So, well, at the, at the same time, we'll need boots of travel buyback for it to matter. And also, I I'm, I'm not a player myself, and I, I got a question. What is oh, your you're, you're a player, Lumi. Uh, well. I'm a player in a different sense, but yeah, what, what is your morale and mentality <laughs> in a game like this where you're leading? Remember, it was Templar Assassin getting a triple kill uh, 10 minutes in. He got the first blood. He got the, the zero minute bottle. And now you're still up by 12 kills. It's a gold chart. You're still up by 15,000, but you're not breaking Raxus. You gave away Aegis and Cheese. How is your mentality? Do you think uh, the, the, the Dire team is facing it's with right now? It's hard to say without being in the war room there, but you got to feel like for LGD, they have to know that their late game isn't their strongest point. I mean, because they've struggled with it in the past, and another game where they're struggling with it here. I'm sure they're... I, I doubt they're fighting with each other because this is still a winnable game, but it's more just, like, secretly, are some of the players maybe feeling a bit nervous? Are they playing with a little bit scared? For Rising Stars, it's... I don't want to say nothing to lose, but very little to lose. You're not expected to win this game... If at all, right? There's very little pressure on you, and yeah. if you lose, you're not eliminated. You just go to game three. So for LGD, a lot of pressure on them. Can they deal with it in the clutch? That's what we're really about to find out. 16k gold lead, 15k experience lead. By rights, they should win this game with the advantage they had. If they lose this, that's just them not. Con uh, it's not, it's them not coming through with their advantage. But I would say like 99 times out of 100, you have the start that LGD did. That team should go on to win the game. Yeah, I mean, again, I just don't want to keep pointing out mistakes, but remember that bot rack's push. That bot rush should be dead right now. And who knows how that game <laughs> is going to go. I'm not sure if Cyclops is actually in the stream chat or not, but hello to Cyclops if you are. I miss you, buddy. But uh, either way, we'll see. 6K gold up on Pike. <laughs> That's a lot, man. What is he going to go for next? What do you want this game? I, I, f I don't think they're lacking for damage. I think LGD's problem is just that they kind of get blown up when they overextend here, so... Maybe things like Manta-style Heart are more in line with what you want to go for. Or do you want to get a Butterfly? Because there is now Basher and, and, and Juggernaut, and he's hitting. That's, that's definitely true, and uh, you're not going to see that Alchemist nope. building. He's got a Heart. And MKB soon. I kind of like the Heart. I think it's the safer choice. I wouldn't have minded seeing Assault Caress. I think those are the two big items you want. Something that helps you tank up and something that helps you push. Uh, either one of those would have been a suitable choice. And I mean, he is sitting at 1400 HP, so if you look at that, maybe like, oh, Heart is the kind of the, the safest choice. Yeah, in choice. terms of keeping his effective HP as high as possible, the Heart's definitely going to do more than the AC. But in terms of helping the push, maybe AC is a bit better. So either way, he'll go safe. And I think safe is what LGD want after the way that last push went. Oh, speaking of that, uh, this is something I completely forgot. I think Air. Um, after we talked about AC, he should be going for Shivas for sure. Considering the fact that if he gets vacuumed into the wall, you give them an AC aura. Yeah. Whereas if you build Shiva now, they already have a Shiva themselves on the dark series, so you're not giving them anything for free. But he's nope, going he's going to AC. So it's it's definitely an item that helps them to go more offensive later in the game. But it's a bigger risk item now in the sense that they they lack one layer of AOE. They also give them a free aura once that vacuum wall hits hits the alchemist. And alchemist being a melee hero, probably getting caught in the vacuum. Right, wall. always. Yeah. Unless he, the only way he doesn't is if Darkseer just flat out dies before he casts any spells. Which is definitely a possibility. I mean. With the abyssal blade, it certainly is. As yeah. tanky as Brex is, he's not unkillable. He's hard to kill. He's definitely not unkillable. And Wow. He, he does have blink and BKB though, so I imagine he's going to stay very, very far back and basically use it as a counter initiate. Rising Stars, they'll group up bottom lane, they're going to protect Shao 2G. Do the scales start to tip if this goes longer, Lumi? That's my question now. The way Rising Stars have itemized their carries, they aren't really building the best late game items. The early mech on ALK doesn't do that much for you now. It's an okay item to have for your team, but not a big DPS item. Juggernaut, BKB, Drum, Shadow Blade, not really the most cost efficient for raw damage output. Can Rising Stars take this if it keeps on going? If it goes later and later, does it favor them? Or do they just sort of stay even? I think so. I mean, it, look at LG inside. They don't have any natural, like, for example, Hex Carrier. So you don't have any kind of 
great late game intelligence. The dark seer, but he's not going for right. Him. He's going for kind of initiation team fight that kind of stuff, which is fine. Uh, your Templar assassin is a hero that kind of tips off, right? Like she's already, I want to say, already hit her peak, and she's not doing as much in a team fight. And and the rest you have Sand King, which epicenter is mostly like an AOE slow at this point. You have Visage, which maybe you could siege down a couple buildings. But yeah, maybe this is where the Visage is just your, your secret split-pushing weapon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has been farming and split-pushing with his birds. So okay. You, so you look at you look at uh, Pycat, he's really your only true late-game carry, and I don't know if he could solo really handle... Uh, is he? G might be the real late-game carry, with oh. the butterfly now picked up on him. They're going to start the fight off the right way by jumping on Chautuji. Remember, he's got no his buyback. ultimate. He's not going to pop it yet. He's got the Abyssal as well. He won't use anything. He'll it's go down. No buyback. No buyback. Oh, man. LGD, it was their turn to blunder a bit earlier, but this may have been the bigger blunder on the Juggernaut. No Aegis, no cheese, no buyback, and no way out. They got cogs. They got they got Dragon Slave. They got Acid Spray. We're, Let's see how good this stuff is. We're about yeah. We're about to see if the cogs are Imbo or not. And I think the answer is not when LGD just walk around them. Which bottom lane is a wider choke. You can easily do. Stun gets lobbed in. We'll connect on G. They'll take this Ranger X first. Doesn't really matter. They should be able to get one lane of Rax off of this, which won't necessarily end the game, but gives them a commanding advantage. They may take two though. 50 seconds on Juggernaut. Hard to say if LGD can bring the second one down. They're going to try for it, though. By golly, they want to end this game now. They've got that slight opening. The window has been propped up, and they just want to close it now on Rising Stars. Don't let them fight one more time. Don't let them get another pick off. The cogs are there. LGD oh. trying to force that game three. XDD pulled on the wrong side of the cogs. Will get picked off, and not where he wanted to be, for sure. Brax able to vacuum back, and... Now they're going to work on that tower. Epicenter being channeled. Blake in for Misery, but it only goes on to Air, who is BKB'd. Misery gets blown up, zapped in the face for his trouble. But maybe it's all just about running interference These birds, here. These birds are doing so much damage, and the Lusions are right there as well. Air going to toss out another stun. That's going to get BKB by PyCat. PyCat's low. He does have a heart. Super can zap in, and he's going to try to self disrupt. He does. Just barely, though. There's Cheese up on the Alchemist. He has to man fight this. His ultimate is out. And look at the Templar Assassins focusing on the racks. Finally, they're going to get double racks. Shao Juji is back, but can he be enough for the team? And he's so damn slow. These traps force that forward against G. G Melstrike dodges. Now there's a Burst Strike coming back, and LSA is going to miss BKB on Shao Juji. He wants to man fight, but look at the crits coming out. He has to Omni GG slash, but it's not enough. Trying to spin out of there. And he also is going to go down a meltdown against Rising Star. And it's going to be a meteorite fall as they crash and burn. And it looks like LGD has somehow salvaged this late game, which it looked really dicey for a long time there. I got to say, I felt they were somewhat handed it there. Yeah. And not having my bag on your hard carry juggernaut, farming that bottom lane with no tier 2 up. But LGD, cr credit where credit is due, their early game in particular was sensational. Amazing movement by Misery. I also want to credit Misery again for that, that two-hero burrow strike, because I think Juggernaut actually could have assassinated two heroes and maybe helped Rising Stars claw their way back into this game. But now it's just Fountain farming for LGD, and it's going to be smooth sailing from here. And a triple kill for Pykett at the Fountain. Rising Stars, they'll finally tap out. They have been thoroughly defeated. LGD, they improved their record in 40-minute games to 7-13, and 13, which... Again, still not the best record there, but they get an important win, and maybe this will be sort of that, that game where, hey guys, in the end, we pulled it together when it counted in the clutch. We go to game three, we feel confident. It, it's so ironic how um, Rising Star made a comeback was a smoke gank right before the Roshan fight. Because that's that, what LGDN normally uh, does. Yeah, that, and, and then LGDN, they smoke gank right after the Aegis timed out. They definitely marked down the timing. They're like, oh, you no know Aegis on Juggernaut, let's go for him. They got it, and that was, that was it. Great play from LGD. And I mean, I, I would just say I liked how they drafted for G because they got him the TA. Right. But here they can snowball. And I feel like this team just needs kind of that that kick and, you know, that, that something extra, that turbo boost, that snowball hero, whatever you want to call it, that, that little bit to get them over the hump and get them started off the right way. And they certainly had it. G was 9-0, and zero, ends up 15-3-9. Great performance from him. Had a lot of help from his team. Overall, for LGD, everybody mostly pulling their weight this game. There was that one fight where they overextended at the Roche, or uh, at the base uh, really badly, but aside from that, they played well. Yeah, uh, it was. Sometimes when you play this kind of early game lineup, those one mistake is very yeah. detrimental. But looks like they were able to pull it out, and we're going to game three, and that's. I'm we haven't excited. had a game three here for we, we, for a long time, right? We have it. It's been uh, the Dota 2 Super League, an amazing tournament. But I gotta say, the games have not 
lived up to it yet. I imagine they will in the playoffs. Yeah, but we have Orange DK coming up soon as well. Yeah, I'm, that one could be amazing, but it has been a lot of stomps, to be honest. We'll, well see. Th this, this was a fairly exciting game. Not, not, th not these two games. Even game one was, I felt, fairly close right, at right. points for, for LGD. They couldn't take it in the end. They do take game two, guys, and now the North American European transplants. Can they bring it? all the way to a, con a satisfying conclusion. Can they take game three or is Rising Stars going to bounce back? We're going to find out right after this break.